Hello and welcome to our equipment system series version 2. In this episode we are working on a UI for our wardrobe which we made in the last episode. The wardrobe if you don't know is this little menu that pops up when we push the tab key and you get this little uh, 2D render of our character in action. So we're going to dress this up, make it a little bit better and start reading some values for us to look at. So I'm going to our wardrobe UI. Now this is the current setup we have where we have a horizontal box lying out our vertical box here, the picture and then the vertical box. And the vertical box is either side we're going to use for the equipment tabs. The idea being is that each time we click on one, we can open another window over here that will update and change its inventory based on how, what items we have uh, on our person. So we can change which item we have equipped. So. What we're going to do here is, first of all, we're going to add some background to our menu so we don't see the whole game through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my hold of the box. Uh, actually, not, not hold of the box. We're just going to drag in a blur and put that on the canvas panel. Click on the background blur and you want to make it fill the whole screen. Now to make it fill the whole screen, go to anchors and choose this one in the bottom right and then change all the offsets to zero. And that will make it fill up the entire space. Now this you want to change the blur strength to a value that you're happy with. So I'm going to try 5. And I think that's quite good. Now obviously we don't want to blur out the menu. We actually want to keep that solid. So what we're going to do is change the position of the background blur in our hierarchy. So just click and drag that above the horizontal of the box. That's now behind it. Okay, alongside that, we're also going to have a darker background as well. So I'm going to add a border to it. So to add border and drag that to it as well. Canvas panel that is. And we'll make this fill the whole screen. So exactly the same method. Choose the bottom right anchor and change all the offsets to zero. And I'll close the gaps at all the edges. I'm going to change the color of this to uh, brush color. I'm going to change that to black and change the alpha here. To 0.75 and uh, maybe 0.5 like so and again we want this to not be in front of our character when it's behind so just drag that be above it on the hierarchy so let's see how that looks in game okay and there's our menu hit tab again come out of here that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So we now need to make the slot icons for our different wardrobe pieces. Now, rather than do each slot individually, because they're all going to have the similar functionality, we're going to make them a separate sub widget. So we're going to close this and make a new widget. And I'm going to call this one wardrobe equipment slot. And we're going to open this up. And we're going to design it. So I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel because we don't want that. And we don't want it because we are doing a sub widget. So it's going to belong to another canvas panel in this case. And we don't we want to be a specific size. We don't want to fill up any sort of absolute positioning. So get rid of this canvas panel will be better. Uh, so in here we're going to set the size. So I'm going to do size box. Drag that in there. And I'm going to change the size box width and height override here. 128 by 128. Now you notice it doesn't change here in the viewport, that's because it's set to fill screen. Change that to desired. Now you see what it's going to look like. Okay, so in our size box here, we're going to have a button. We drag a button into it, and this button we want to name, and we'll do wardrobe equipment button. And the is variable should be ticked, leave that tick, that's what we want. And then we're going to go down to background color. And I'm going to change that to be alpha of zero. We'll make our own design here. Okay, with that done, we're going to put in a border. In this border, we want to fill and stretch out horizontally and vertically. So tick this and this. And we're going to change the padding here to zero. It fills the whole space up. Now this wardrobe uh, button is going to be uh, fully black. So I'm going to change the brush color here to fully black. Like so. 
And then inside that border, we're going to have an image. And that image will be the thumbnail of the actual item. So we should drag this into here. And there you go. And the image, again, you want to make sure the padding set to uh, not 4 and 2. Uh, we're not going to do it at 0 either. We're going to give it a little bit of padding around the edges. I'm going to give it a padding of, let's say, 8. I, I like that. That's not quite nice. In this image, uh, you want to make sure it also is horizontally and vertically aligned to be stretched across both of those. Right, we're going to change the name of this image. And this will be button thumb now. And we're going to hit compile and save that. The image should be set to is variable if it isn't already. Make sure that's ticked to is variable. Okay, so this is going to refer to a particular item. And we need to know what item or what details about that item to read from. So go into your graph and we're going to make a new variable. And this variable is going to be the row name. And this will be variable type of name. So why are we doing it like this? Remember, our equipment is stored in a database table, such as this. This will store every single item that is available to the game. And we want to be able to call the row name here to get the details we want from here, such as the stat, uh, stats and the thumbnails. So we want the row name here. And then on the pre-construct, we're going to grab the row name and we want to find the details from that. So you want to right click and get data table row. So we want to get a specific row and that will be determined by the row name. Make sure you change the data table drop down to match your equipment data table. There we go. And this will now output the order details it's found matching this row name. If it has been found that is. So if the out row here, we're going to drag this out and do break. And we can now see all the details available to our item. Most importantly, the thumbnail. So with the thumbnail there, we're going to drag out our bottom thumbnail, choose get. And then from there, we kind of set a brush from texture. And that texture is the thumbnail. Plug that into row found. There we go. We will be doing something different with row not found later on, so don't worry about that for now. Okay, so hit compile and save that. So this will find the row name. However, we need to set what that row name is. Now, being a sub widget, this will be dynamically built inside our game. So we need to be able to change the row name freely. So the row name here, I'm going to make is editable, instance editable and hit compile. I'm then going to make a, another function on here that will help refresh this. So every time we do change our item, it'll update and change the thumbnail. So we're going to basically do a function or event on here. We'll do create event. Oh, not create event, sorry, custom event. And we'll call this one refresh slot details. And that will simply just go into the get data table row. All it's doing is just changing the texture. You compile and save that. And we're done here for now. I'm going to close this and then we're going to go into our wardrobe UI. Now in our wardrobe UI, as I said, this vertical box here and here are going to contain those slots for the equipment. So go down onto your palette for user created and search for the wardrobe equipment slot. Drag one of these into the vertical box on the left here. You'll see it pop up. Click on this, and then on the right hand side, we want to tell it to uh, not fill horizontally or vertically, we want it to be centered. And what it's going to do is going to keep it the same size that we set it back on our uh, size box inside the button. We're going to leave that as such there. So next, we want to add some padding to this. So I'm going to go to padding, and I'm going to add some padding to the top one here of, say, 50. Knock that down a bit. And I'm going to name my slot here, change it from wardrobe equipment slot to head slot. And I'm going to duplicate that. And this one is going to be called, um, let's say, let's go for uh, 
torso slot. And you can see the padding's kept as we duplicated it. That's the torso slot. Next, we're going to do the trouser slot here. We're going to go, uh, well, for the Americans, we'll call it pants slot. Or I'll call it leg slot. That way, everyone knows what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> leg slot uh, for there. And then finally, we're going to do shoes, the feet slot. And you do it based on how many pieces you, you how many bits you've got broken up here. So I'm just going to go into leg slot here and change the name of this one to feet slot. If it would let me type, be helpful. Feet slot. Okay, and that's that lot done. Um, and then we're going to go to the right hand side and add the accessories and the weapons. So I'm going to drag in another wardrobe equipment slot, but this time in the other vertical box just there. And again, hit center, center. And change the padding in the top here to 50. And in here, we're going to change the name this to accessories, accessory slot. And we're going to duplicate that. So control W. And we're going to change the name of this one to weapon slot. Now, because weapon is very different from armor, um, contextually anyway. Um, I'm going to make this have a bigger sca uh, spacing between these two. So I'm going to change this from 50 to 100. Get yeah, a much bigger gap there. So it's on its own, doing its own thing. Okay, we're going to hit compile there. And we could add later on like different things on here, like um, I don't know, uh, things that you don't see. So like talismans, uh, sigils, things like that nature. We can add here as extra things. Right to the weapon, maybe like runes. Right. Something to play about with later, I'm sure. So here we have our design for our menu. So let's again before we go any further, just test that and see how that looks in game. Always do a regular test. Make sure it looks okay. It's not looking too bad. I think we need a bit more uh padding and design around the actual whole window itself. We'll go through that, I think. Uh we'll close this. Go to wardrobe UI. And I'm going to go to this horizontal box. Yep. And I'm going to wrap this with a border. Wrap with border. And this border, we're going to change the color of the brush here to black. Okay. Compile and save that. And let's see how that looks in game now. I think it looks a bit better. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, not too bad. Maybe you change the color of the background of the, the image in the middle. So for that one, we just go to the middle scale box and the image inside of that. I'm just going to wrap the scale box here with a border. And this border, we're going to make brush color black, but then turn it up to a bit of a gray. Like so. Okay, let's dismiss that error. Let's see how that looks. And obviously you can use textures for this rather than just colors. I'm just saving time by avoiding that. Okay, not too bad. I think we'll keep that as it is. Okay. So here we have our menu ready to go. Next, we need to have a, uh, what's this, wardrobe, player, controller. Let's have a look what we've got going on here. Um, I'll probably, yes, yeah, because I'm quitting it before yeah, that's that's fine. That's understandable. Don't worry about that for now. Um, so we're going to make this uh, now have the inventory section over here. Now the inventory section is going to be very different. Uh, it's going to have different types of slots, but functionally look or mostly look the same. So I'm going to hit save on that. Close this for now, and I'm going to go to my wardrobe equipment slot. I'm going to right click on this and duplicate it. And this will be inventory equipment slot and we're going to open this up and the one change we're going to do is change the row name here to be exposed on spawn as well hit compile and save that now we want to expose on spawn because as we build our inventory we need to be able to search for row names in our inventory that have been saved 
and then be able to fetch those from our database however we do need that row name to be exposed to us so we can set it as we are building our inventory we hit save on there and close this go back to my wardrobe ui and in here we're going to have a inventory grid here here but probably we'll probably do it at the top here and have a tooltip up here at the bottom based on what one you've got selected so up top we're going to do a grid and we're going to do uniform grid and then you can drag this out onto your canvas um i'll put it onto my canvas panel there and just minimize this there's my grid and i can place it wherever i want let me there we go um and as you can see you can try and line up by eye like so however line up by eye typically not a good idea so what we're going to do is we're going to make this line up with the side of the screen like we have done with the window here the window here just to remind you is set to anchor on the left hand side we're going to do that exact same thing but for our inventory so go to the inventory grid here and i'm going to change the size of this to match the same size as our window so it's a bit of symmetry so the window is set to a size of 800 so i'm going to go down here anchor it to the far right and i'm going to set position uh what do i have here go to this one uh, 100 100 800 100 okay so i'm going to click on this i'm going to do 100 100 800 and then 100 okay but obviously you can see it's gone to the wrong side all you do is change the alignment in the x here to be one and i'll pop it this side now we've got on this side but however we've got it going the wrong way here just position the x here to minus 100 and that'll fix that for you okay so there's that inventory grid and as i said i do want a bit of space here at the bottom to put in for our uh, tooltip so i'm going to click on this and i'm going to change the size of this to 500 uh, sorry not 800 uh, the offset bottom here to uh, 400 there we go so you've got this sort of setup here now the uniform grid pattern here we can also wrap a border in this so we're going to wrap with border and I'm going to put it with a black border, similar to how we got our window here. So I'm going to change the brush color here to black. Compile and save. Okay, so now we need to fill this thing up with our inventory. So click on the uniform grid panel and go to the uniform grid panel name and name this one the inventory grid. And tick is variable. Compile. And in the graph here, we're going to go to the pre-construct, and we're just going to tell it to, by default, just fill it with some a number of slots. We'll fill those slots up with items later. So in the pre-construct, we're going to do a for loop. And in here, we're going to take the inventory grid, get, and we're also going to put in the last index here of, let's say, uh, let's do seven, so it does eight things okay and in here we're going to take inventory grid and we're going to uh not inventory grid set so loop body create widget and you want to choose your inventory equipment slot you see the row name appear there now because we expose it on spawn so that's what we want there we're not going to plug anything into it yet we'll do that uh, in the next episode in in return value though we want to add that to the inventory grid so add child the uniform grid and it'll ask you for a row name and the content the content is going to be this value here and not row name sorry row number and column number and they're going to come from the index here we will take the index out and we're going to divide that by another int now whatever number we divide this by say let's say let's divide it by four this is going to give us a whole number indicating what row we're in so we're going to drag this over to the row and the column is going to be the modulo. So we're going to take the index and do modulo, which is the percentage sign. And we're going to plug that into column. And that gets you the remainder. So for example, if the index is set to 3, that's going to give us row 0, which is correct. But column number 3, if we divide it by, uh, let's say, 4. 
Okay, so if you divide by four, we're going to get zero and then three a remainder. And then give us the column. Okay. Um, and I think we're good there. We hit compile and save that. And we'll do the last index. We'll double check that on designer view. And there are our slots appearing all well and good there. Now you may want to center these. So what we have to do is say to the individual slots here. Uh, sorry, not individual slots. Go to child layout and go to slot padding and we can type it in here and do uh, 20, 30, 50. No, too much, too much, too much. Do 30. Okay. Um, if you want to, you can click in the minimum desired slot width as well, and you can put in, in our 128 by 128, and that will make sure we don't get anything less than that. Okay. So there's our inventory grid set up, receive inventory. Obviously, you can fit in a lot more. Uh, we'll make that expand later on and make it a bit more dynamic, a bit more exciting to look at. But for now, let's just see if it appears all okay. And before, before we wrap up. So here's our equipment menu. So on the left hand side, we'll have the equipment that we have on us. We, the idea is that we can click on those buttons that will then show the inventory grid. Now the inventory grid at the moment is quite static. We're going to make that a bit smarter and make it generate uh, a, 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 the rows of uh, equipment that we have in our inventory, make it scrollable, make it start dynamic in size and so forth. And when you hover over each one, it can show a tooltip showing the items details and whether or not you want to equip it and click on it and equip it. So in that sense, we're going to leave it there and we're going to come back to this in the next episodes and finish off the inventory grid and set up the inventory component on our player character. If you want to watch our next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. We can watch all my videos early from one, just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It really is amazing, so thank you again so, so much. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.